Thank you so much for being here. We're really excited to speak with Victor today. Um, and um, real quick, just a little housekeeping. Um, we're gonna do a Q and A at the end of the presentation. So if you have questions, please write your questions in our chat um, and then I'll um, read the chat out loud and um, we'll go from there. So um, yeah, feel free to put questions in um, throughout the presentation or, or wait till the end. Um, but yeah, it's great to see folks. Where is everyone coming from? We're here in Portland and we've got Victor is in Moldova. So Victor is about 10 hours ahead. So it's 10, 10 p.m. <laughs> there. And yeah, it's noon here in Portland. So um, Port Orchard, we got someone from Washington. Great, thanks for being here, Caroline. Um, so I'll just go ahead and introduce myself. So my name is C. Meyer. I am the exhibitions director here at Blue Sky. Um, and we are here in Portland, Oregon. Um, we are thrilled to have Victor with us today to speak on the Zaharia Kushner um, archive. Um, and if you are able to come by Blue Sky to check out the exhibition, it's really, really, it's such a great exhibition. Um, and it's up uh, now until the end of December. Um, and we are open Wednesday through Saturday, noon to five. So um, yeah, if you're in the Portland area or plan to come here in the next couple of weeks, please stop by and see us and uh, keep an eye out on what we're doing in 2024. We do uh, two shows, two exhibitions usually every month. So we're switching over new work um, regularly. So keep up to date with us. If you have questions about what's going on, you can check out our website um, and see what's coming up or what was in the past if you're interested in what we've we've shown in the past. Um, all right, so um, as I mentioned, uh, we have our current show, The Joy of Living uh, by Zaharia Kushner with, and um, it was actually put together by Victor Maxian, who we have with us today. Um, Zaharia passed away in 1993. So um, unfortunately we can't speak to him directly today, but um, we are very excited to have Victor. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly give a little background about uh, our photographer. So Zaharia was a school teacher, blacksmith and photographer. Kujnir was born, lived all his life in a small village from Moldova. He witnessed both world, world wars. In World War II, he was enlisted by the Soviet army as a soldier, was taken prisoner by the German army in 1941 and returned home in 1944. He was a teacher in the village school in 1946. In 1947, during the famine, he had shot someone who had come into his garden to steal fruit and spent three years in prison. In 1953, a relative of his showed him a camera, and since then, he became the first photographer in the village. He started photographing weddings, funerals, and portraits of the villagers. He stopped making pictures in 1973 when another photographer came to the village. He stored the negatives in the attic of the house where they stayed for almost 50 years. In 2016, they were discovered by a student, Victor, and then Zaharia Kuzhner's photos were published for the first time. And a little bit about our guest, Victor. Victor Maxian graduated from the Academy of Arts in Chisinau in 2016, uh, is a filmmaker and curator. While working on his diploma film, he discovered in an abandoned house, the collection of photographs made by Zaharia Kuzhner. He is the curator of several exhibitions made in Italy, Poland, Romania, and in the Republic of Moldova. He directed a documentary film about Zaharia Kuzhner, which is in a post-production phase. So, um, and real quick, I will have got, these are just two views of our current exhibition install shots of the show. Um, so if you're not able to come, we do post the install shots on our website as well. So um, if you're not able to make it to Portland, you can go there as well. I also want to let folks know that we are recording. Um, we are recording this, and it will be up on our YouTube um, channel, and probably by next week. So, if you have to drop out or you want to send it to somebody, um, you'll be able to view this um, kind of in perpetuity on our YouTube. Okay, so I'm going to stop my share and hand it over to you, Victor. Victor, um, yes, thank you again so much for your time and for being here. It's been really fascinating to um like in the process of framing everything and looking at the works and now seeing them up on the walls 
just getting an insight into this photographer's world. And um, we're also obviously very curious about your story as well and how you discovered the negatives. So I will leave it to you. And it looks like you're there. I think you can unmute because you're muted. There we oh, go. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, hello, everyone. I'm very glad we can uh, speak today. Um, I will start my presentation with uh, share screen. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, um, I just wanted to say that I don't have a really presentation. I just have some photos and I will uh, tell you the story how I discovered the negatives. Uh, it was in 2016. As the C said, uh, I was a student at the Academy of Arts and I needed to make a film. And I went to in the village, uh, which is uh, 120 kilometers from Chisinau. And I discovered uh, this village. It is a village which is uh, almost abandoned with a lot of uh, old houses. And also, <clears throat> it has uh, some uh, traditional houses, like we used to say uh, they are hobbit houses of Moldova. It is like uh, cellars where people used to live uh, for hundreds of years. And now uh, they are not so um, used. Uh, only few people uh, live in them today. So I really enjoy this village, as you can see here is also um airship uh, and then it's like a let's say them uh, hobbit house of moldova abandoned so i uh, discovered this unique place with river with uh, beautiful nature and i decided to make here a film i was uh, living in also an abandoned house for a few months while I was uh, filming the video. And I was entering uh, abandoned houses to see what people uh, leave behind when they uh, leave the place. So I discovered different things, different handmaids uh, in uh, houses, in households. But one day when I entered this house, Uh, which is uh, Zaharia Kushnir's house. And it's just like this inside, uh, without the houses, without windows and doors. Uh, everyone can uh, enter there. Uh, and this house, I discovered something like this, which is a photo negative, six by six centimeters. And um, in the first day, I discovered a uh, few of them, or maybe 30. And uh, I left. I went to Chisinau. And uh, after two weeks, I returned in the village with a friend and then said, uh, uh, come to me. I will show you the place where I discovered the negatives. And in some place, at the entrance of the house, uh, the same amount of negatives I found and I just didn't understand I, I said um, I just picked them up uh, how uh, they are here so uh, I saw that they are falling from the attic and uh, I figured out that uh, I need to climb up so I went there and I found um, these are the negatives how we found them so uh, there were almost 4,000 negatives and this is the process of we when we clean them uh, in a bathroom with no fundings. And this is the photos when uh, we returned and we we discovered more and more. So uh, as you see, this is the attic, and uh, it is a lot of garbage and different objects like books, uh, uh, notebooks, and. Uh, different different kind of stuff that uh, the family used to keep in the attic and through all of these objects um, a lot of negatives 
as we understood later from uh, um, the daughter of uh, Zaharia Kushnir, who lived in the same village, she said that um, they were in a suitcase and they were uh, in the attic. Uh, but uh, as you can see, in this house, everyone can enter. So uh, maybe some someone came and uh, stole the suitcase and through all its containings uh, in the attic. So that's why we, we found them um, all around the place. And the person who stole the suitcase didn't know that uh, the value was the, the inside of this, this suitcase. <clears throat> so this is the attic. This is uh, the house, yeah. Um, in the village, we also discovered um, later when I see the photos of uh, printed photos in the different abandoned house, I could see that uh, the photos were made by Zachariah. And um, finally, we scanned the photos and um, <laughs> you can see that. Uh, while photographing people around him, uh, he had a very unique way of uh, perception, the world and uh, the aesthetics um, he felt and he could capture on film. It is different. Um, after I discovered his photos, um, I went to different villages in Moldova and I asked people if they have had a photographer there. And let's say in 60s, in 70s, almost every village had had their photographer. But the difference uh, between them and Zachary is that uh, nobody kept the negatives. And uh, uh, is that only Zachary could make uh, such a beautiful portraits, for example. And uh, only he was uh, the, the man who was totally involved in making photographs um, as a pieces of art, not just uh, for money, even if he didn't uh, publish them anywhere. So uh, I think that he knew uh, that he is making something different, something unique, but that's why he kept the negatives and he knew that uh, someday these photographs will be published and uh, the people will uh, will know more about him and uh, his art and yeah um, this december is uh, 30 years as uh, he died and uh, after the 30 years we can uh, we can have uh, the his photographs exhibited in the usa for the first time at the blue sky gallery uh, which i think uh, he would be very proud of if you have any questions i'm uh, ready to to discuss them with you. Thanks so much, Victor. Um, yeah, if folks have questions, please feel free to put your questions in the chat. Um, it's such a fascinating, it's such a fascinating story, just your own discovery of the negatives. And, and thank you for sharing those pictures. That, um, I'm curious when it, just reading a, about um, Zahari's bio, um, it mentioned that he, he stopped photographing or um, when another photographer came to town. And I was curious um, if that, like when you were saying like each village had a photographer, was that sort of like you had a village photographer and that was a job and was he making these photographs like like you were saying as as for money or as like a family family portraits or do you or was he just it was more of an artistic or, or a blend of both and I'm I guess there's two questions there. And then, yeah, just curious about like um, what you know about like that you know, other photographer coming into town and then just being like, okay, I guess I'm not 
doing this anymore. I'm, I'm curious if you know more about that. Yeah, we in the process of making the, the documentary film about Zacharia, we spent uh, almost uh, two weeks in the village this summer uh, with the crew. And uh, we interviewed a lot of people, including the people who you see young in the photos now and are still alive. Uh, we met them. Um, they remember the, the time when uh, the, the, the photographer in the village uh, changed. I mean, uh, it was a Russian guy who came as a teacher in the village and uh, he came with a camera, with a more modern camera. And he started to make photos. And that was the moment when Zacharia said that I'm, 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 I'm too old. I don't see so good. Uh, um, he just uh, stepped away. Um, but the photo, of, I, I've seen these photos of this Russian guy, uh, the teacher here that came in the village, and they are not uh, pieces of art as we see in Zacharia. It's just photos of people just uh, like we do today with the phone without thinking about composition and without uh, waiting for the moment, for the right moment, uh, for the decisive moment, as uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson said about the photography. Right. And I think that's what we were sort of chatting before we started about. You can you can see how considered Zahari is in all of his um, compositions. Um, that there's a lot of thought about where where the people are placed and who's in it and if there's a direct gaze or not, um, or if it's a single portrait versus a group portrait. Um, so it's 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 fascinating to me to yeah, to see a lot. Like I was saying, there's there's some uh, motifs that he's using from this was in the 60s, um, comparatively to a lot of photographers today that are sort of using very similar um, techniques of portraiture, which is it's cool. Um, yeah, you know, uh, we we were asking uh, ourselves uh, if he was doing this for money or uh, for pleasure. And um, we started a research and we found that uh, he was working on a camera, a Lubitel 2 camera, a Russian camera, which uh, <laughs> works on a film on six by six millimeters. And uh, on the roll, it is only 12 uh, photo photos you can make uh, on uh, one piece of, of, um, of roll. Um, and, and the price for this roll was twice bigger than uh, the 36 uh, um, uh, so it, on 35 millimeters you could uh, use on 36 photos. And the price was twice uh, lower than the price of these only 12 photos if you make them bigger on a square format. And Zaharia knew about this, uh, but he was working only on a square format. So he was uh, okay with the idea that uh, the materials uh, was expensive, twice expensive, and having only 12 uh, photos in the end just for uh for the composition and uh, so um as we understood from the interviews we made with uh, relatives and people in the village uh people said that um making photos was uh, his only thing in life he loved to do uh as uh, you uh, could read in the description he was a blacksmith also but uh, every time when somebody came to his house asking him for some photos or uh, asking him to go to uh, make a photo reportage of a wedding or, or a funeral, he uh, was leaving all his work uh, in, the, um, in the blacksmith at the, as a blacksmith and he was going to be a photographer. So this was uh, the, his uh, calling uh, of the soul. Uh, this was what he wanted to do. And in the end, uh, people said that uh, he wasn't uh, um, very interested in building big house for uh, the children, as everyone was doing. Like they, everyone around wanted to be, uh, to have big houses for them, for the children, work uh, every day until the night. 
to earn uh, money, to earn uh, different stuff around them for their family. Zacharia uh, was living all his life in a small house, as you could see, it is a house of uh, like two rooms only. Uh, but uh, at the end, uh, what he left behind, uh, it is bigger value that uh, all of these of, of, of his neighbors wanted to gain uh, just houses. He, he lived poor during his life, but in the end, he left us um, such a beautiful uh, big treasure visually, uh, which visual treasure which we can uh, uh, see and we can travel in time uh, using uh, this his photographs. Thanks, Victor. Okay, I'm gonna read um, some questions that are in the chat. So uh, Liz is asking, of the 4,000 uh, negatives found, how many have you scanned and printed? Uh, so we scanned all of them, uh, the big quality, uh, but we printed, um, well, uh, how many is it, 28 in Portland? Yeah, we have 28 in the show, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we maybe have uh, 55 printed in Bucharest. And so it's uh, no, not more than 100 printed. But we have all of them scanned, so uh, the negatives were sent to a safe place to, to be kept. So we are working now with scans of only. Great. Thank you. Um, and Dennis is asking, um, this is kind of more a question for me, I can answer. How did Blue Sky become involved in this work and exhibit? Also, is there a book in process for this work? So I can, I can certainly answer the first part. So. Blue Sky has an exhibition committee that reviews all of our submissions that come in for exhibition proposal. Um, and we actually, uh, committee members can also bring work, bring artists to, to the group to review as well. And so um, one of our founders, Christopher Rauschenberg, had seen uh, some, some a website or a, an article, I believe, about, about you, Victor, and your story and the, and the photos. And so he brought them to our committee to review. And so the committee had um, reviewed it and voted to show. So that's sort of how the process happened on our end. Um, and then I reached out to Victor about um, the potential of having a show. So we've been in con we've been in touch for over a year, um, kind of talking about an exhibition. Um, and then we did put out a catalog of this exhibition. So Blue Sky has a catalog here. We have copies here, folks can purchase. Um, you can also go on our website onto and um, our MagCloud site and buy that um, through our website and that will get mailed to you. So if folks are interested in, in our exhibition catalog, there's that, but I guess I'll ask you, Victor, is there a book in the making, um, something more formal? I just uh, sent um, a link um we we have a book printed here in moldova at um, printed house, printing house and uh, as i understand they have the possibility to ship the book um in different countries but i'm not sure so uh, you should try if you cannot order the book online uh, you can ask me and we'll find a solution to to send you the book but it's a, it's it is the first book and it's not so uh, good quality, uh, more like an album. And then, um, and we are working now to make a second edition of more uh, better quality and uh, uh, with information about the photographer. So this is uh, the album only with photos. Now we want to do a book with more information about the photographer, about the all the the. the phenomenon of Zachary. Great. Yeah, it would, I mean, for 28 pictures here, that that barely even touch scratches the surface of what you found in, in his house. Um, thanks, Dennis, for asking those questions. Um, Keith uh, comments, uh, first, thank you for your marvelous curiosity and initiative to discover and bring these particular, spectacularly beautiful pictures to life and for honoring this artist. They remind me of August Saunders' work and I wonder if you thought he would have in this small town somehow ever had exposure to other photographers 
work or it was simply his own self-directed artistry. Well, I uh, I didn't found in his household any journals, any newspapers, anything about photography. Mm. Um, not sure, and uh, nobody could answer us the question: Where could he learn photography? I'm just uh, that like uh, his relative. So in in the sixties, not every village had had electricity. And he had a nephew in other village who came in their village uh, because they had electricity to print some photos. And he was seeing his relatives working with photos and he was interested in this. And his nephew just showed him how to do them technically, how to use a camera and how to uh, develop and how to print photos. And uh, this is just the, the the primarily thing. And then, uh, I mean, I, I compared uh, the nephew photographs with Zaharia photographs. It is a um, different level. I mean, he, he, I mean, I think it was just a talent inside of him. Uh, he wanted to show and he just involved everything uh, inside uh, in this uh, part of and For him, it was uh, more um, um, improvisation. He never wanted, he never uh, went somewhere to be published. Of course, it was the Soviet Union uh, censorship and uh, he didn't have um, real chances to chances to be published uh, anywhere. He was making photos for the villagers, but he was making them at the very high level of his uh, perception. Thanks, Keith, for that good question. Um, and Judy is a good segue. Judy uh, comments. He must have had a darkroom and printing equipment. Um, as a documentary photographer using the same kind of six by six camera and working in a village in Ecuador over 30 years, I'm curious where the archive will be housed permanently. Yeah, so uh, in, in his house, uh, he have had two rooms, one for living. Uh, he lived with all his four children and a wife. And the second room was the room for the photography. <laughs> so half of the house <laughs> was uh, occupied by uh, by the his uh, dark room, the photography, and sometimes he was asked he was asking his uh, children to help him to develop or to um, take care of the negatives, and um, so the the, the archive. Uh, now, because of the situation in Moldova, which is uncertain because of the war in Ukraine, uh, we uh, took out the negatives out of the country because uh, we don't know what will be, but they uh, are uh, kept in um, small fridges, which keep uh, temperature and uh, humidity constant, just to have them uh, conservative. Conservatives, yeah. Thanks, Judy, for that good question. And um, Caroline adds, the Instagram page is also helpful. So folks who don't know, there is an Instagram for um, Zaharia's work. And is that, Victor, is that a good way for people to reach out to you? If people wanted to ask you about the yeah, book? Yeah, I'm, 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 let's say, I'm the only in charge of this project. So if you reach me, through Instagram, for Facebook, I would answer you uh, in different ways. Unfortunately, we uh, closed the website um, a few months ago. And it was available, but we are now in the process of creating another one. So uh, you can reach us. Uh, the best way is yeah, Instagram or uh, Messenger, Facebook. Awesome. That's great. That's great to know for folks who have additional questions or want to reach out. Um, and Carolyn, you said the link did not work for you, uh, but yeah, it looks like you were able to get 
copies of the book. So that's great. Um, and then Liz has a follow-up questions about um, your negatives um, and the process there. How and where were the negatives cleaned and preserved? So um, the negatives were cleaned uh, by my uh, teacher of photography from the Academy of Arts. Uh, they were cleaned at his house and, uh, without uh, any uh, money, without any funds. Uh, so in the beginning for us, it was uh, we didn't knew that uh, the photos will become so well known. And we started working in, uh, in, in his house, in his bathroom. So as you could see the photos with me uh, looking at the negative, it was a simple apartment bathroom and uh, we were cleaning them uh, with special um, chemicals. I'm not sure because uh, was uh, the, the process was controlled by my teacher. Um, he was doing that. And, uh, they were arranged to dry. And then uh, we put them in envelopes with the numbers, like in archives. And now every negative has his number, his name, so we can index them and we can find. It is really amazing that the pictures of when you first saw them, how how dirty they were, and that you, and you've been able to to clean them in such a way that you get these. I mean, the prints look yeah. really. And the I, thing uh, you, notice, you can see, um, you know, the sort of fingerprints and there's yeah. there's some residue. But I think that in a way, to me, when I look at them, it it, it adds that the history of how you found them. I think I like that you can still see some of the degradation on the negatives. But just the fact that you were able to get such good quality out of <laughs> these negatives that had just been sitting in dust for, you know, years. Presumably. 50, yeah. If, Wow. Yeah. Um, thanks, Liz, for that additional comment. And George uh, is asking, were there any relatives or residents of his village who you found to have original prints? Um, yeah, we found in the village uh, different prints uh, from the negative. But uh, they are, all of them are cropped. Uh, so uh, as you can see in the photos, uh, uh, for example, in this photo, you uh, started the presentation when there is a person and around him, you can see hands who held uh, the background. Uh, he was cropping only the face of the person, but he was keeping the negative. And uh, when we scan the negative, we see what is around. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I think he was doing uh, work for the people, such as crops, and the original work he was keeping for himself. Mm. Uh, the interesting fact is uh, on the Facebook page, when I started to upload the photos, uh, a lot of people in the village who forgot about uh, the existence of Zachary and these photos uh, started to remember, oh, look, this is my neighbor, and this is my... Uh, these are my grandparents and uh, as you can see on the facebook page uh, almost on every photo somebody is commenting that uh, this is my parents this is my brother this is my sister and uh, a lot of people started to remember about their past uh, which they uh, almost forgot about uh, so zachary i used to make photos and he was taking photo and then um, if somebody wanted to have the photo, they came to him and he was printing the negative on a paper and then he, they were paying. So he didn't ask for the money when he was taking the photo. He asked for the money when they when people came to take the print. That's why he uh, a lot of negatives he didn't uh, in the end uh, sold. I mean just few people came to ask for the printed photos. Maybe they forgot, or the, I don't know, maybe they didn't have money at the time, but he kept the negatives. And um, we, we, we found that people almost uh, forgot about him and the, photo, the photographs until we started to put them on the internet, until the 
the community started to grow people who remember them their neighbors their relatives and uh, in the process of making the documentary we organized a event in the village when we printed all the photos on the papers on a4 simple papers we printed all uh, 4,000 negatives and we organized an event in the village where we showed them. So people came and wrote in the paper uh, who they remember. And it was a very interesting event when uh, 50 people came and they started to recognize uh, uh, themselves uh, being uh, small children or their parents or uh, their grandparents. So it was very emotional uh, moment. Uh, just they they could see images that they didn't know it, images exist. So uh, and with their relatives, with themselves, and um, yeah, this was a uh, very beautiful. Yeah, it's such a it's such a time capsule to unlock, kind of uh, magical in that way. Um, and Judy is asking, and I, I was actually going to ask a question too about your documentary film. Um, where where will people be able to see the film, or where where do you hope it will will end up? Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure how it works uh, with um, distribution of the film, but uh, we hope it will uh, be able um, for for everybody after the, the festival, of course. Um, maybe on uh, this uh, Netflix or HBO or what they have, I don't, I'm not sure. And you mentioned festival, is it, do you already have plans for it to be just seen at a um, specific film festival or, or is, are you still in the process of getting um, that sort of worked mm -hmm. out? Well, this work is uh, in a uh, responsibility of the um, team who is in charge for uh, distribution. I mean, when it's about the festival, you choose from the A class and you take it below A to B to C. Yeah, um, We will try to get as high as possible in the beginning. But in the end, I mean, uh, of course, uh, the film will get to America. And uh, maybe after two years, it will get open to the public on the internet, of course. Yeah. But well, we are still in uh, post-production, yeah. I mean, maybe uh, in this summer, we will announce the premiere. Cool. Well, we would love to um, potentially host maybe a viewing here at Blue Sky too. We could uh, keep in conversation about that, which would be really cool for people to come here and, and see it as well. Um, and uh, Liz uh, also comments, um, thank you for sharing stories of your wonderful discovery and for your dedication in bringing this collection to the world. Thanks, Liz, for, for that. Um, one thing thank I- Thank you for being with us. Yeah, thank you, Liz, for your great questions. Um, I was curious, a couple of folks that have been through to see the show have commented how this project is reminiscent of another, an American sort of similar story of Vivian Meyer. Um, and I'm wondering if you're familiar with Vivian's work and that story as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah, and I'm curious if you've been in touch with those folks too, because I, I could see that being a really interesting joint um, exhibition um or some sort of collaboration i don't know just just curious like yeah what how you feel about um the sort of parallels yeah the per the the, the comparison i mean uh, you can find some uh similar uh yeah, yeah the photographer who nobody knew about and uh somehow it is getting to the public uh, I uh, never get in touch with uh, John, uh, the guy who found uh, Vivian Meyer, but, and then I'm not sure uh, if he is in charge anymore of the photos because they have had some trouble there with uh, some relatives of Vivian from France. I'm, I'm not sure what's happening there. Yeah, in charge of the archive is you're probably figuring it out as you go as well, I'd imagine. 
Uh, but, yeah. um, oh yeah, go ahead. It will be awesome, of course, to organize an exhibition together with uh, Vivian Mars, for example. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned that the Blue Sky show is the first time that this work is being shown in the US. And I was wondering if you um, have any other shows scheduled either in the US or in Europe or elsewhere? Yeah, and the, in March, we have an exhibition in London, in the uh, UK. And then we plan some exhibition in Moldova, and we uh, also would like to make a tour in uh, Europe in different cities. So uh, until now, we've had exhibitions in Italy, in Florence, uh, but uh, we would like to uh, make a tour um, because there are a lot of uh, followers in different European cities. Uh, that are waiting for the exhibition. Uh, I think this will be more easy when we'll have the film. So we'll go together with uh, exhibition and the uh, film screening. Uh, but for uh, the United States, yeah, this is the, the first show. Um, I really wanted to to be a part of the of the opening of the exhibition also because uh, uh, the part of the film, uh, it is an interview with the last uh, Zaharia daughter uh, who is alive, is living in Sacramento, in California. So I, uh, I need to make an interview with her for the film. And uh, I'm still uh, searching a way to make the interview from the distance to send uh, through uh, to her house uh, to make the interview. But I hope, um, yeah, then we will have more uh, exhibitions and film screens in in the USA uh, because uh, many our followers are from the USA. I don't know uh, why. Maybe you can unmute our guests so they can say why they find uh, what are they uh, finding uh, so so special about Zaharia. Okay. Folks should be able to um, unmute yourself. You wanna, you can raise your hand, use the raise hand feature. Um, but yeah, curious uh, for folks who joined us today. Uh, Victor is wondering um, what what brought you here today. What what you're interested in with this work? Feel free to go ahead and just speak up if you'd like. Hi, Victor. Uh, I'm a, a photographer who has worked many years in a village in Ecuador uh, using the same sort of camera, a six by six uh, in black and white. And after 30 years, I had, of course, thousands of negatives and prints and contact sheets. And um, so my issue was a few years ago, what to do with all of this. Um, I've made a digital archive in Ecuador, in the village <clears throat> and in the country. So everyone has access to the digital images, but the physical images, the physical prints, which I had thousands and the negatives themselves, uh, they're going to the University of Texas where there's a library that specializes in Latin American studies. And so after many years, I found a place for the archive from what uh, my work. And, um, and in fact, they're taking everything, including field notes, recordings, interviews, music, anything that relates to this particular village. And so, of course, I was drawn to your story. And of course, I know about Vivian Meyer. And, and also, my work has been largely portraits. And so I, I love what you're doing. And um, it's wonderful that you have a film. I think that's going to make a great deal of difference in terms of finding a permanent archive where everything will be protected. And even the comments of the people who came to the exhibit in Moldova, you know, those should all be a part of the archive as well and her, his daughter. So um, congratulations. Uh, you're a, a wonderful collector and archivist, and uh, and the the photos are spectacular. So thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, hi, uh, Dennis Dimmick. Hi, I first heard about this work, um, I think, when I read an article in the New York Times a year or so ago about it, and it was fascinating in the whole the process of the discovery of the work in the house and sort of the lost archive that was recovered and saved from oblivion was just fascinating to me. But then I was just intrigued by the the way he saw the world. It, there was this sort of very simple, elegant way of, of making people comfortable, framing them up in a way that helped us understand who they were and and uh, where they lived and the characteristics of their life. And and I actually grew up just south of Portland long ago, and I was intrigued that this exhibit was uh, mounted in an ex in in an exhibition in Portland, Oregon. So I I think last week I may have seen a tweet. I guess I don't know what you call those now X's. Maybe there was one on that platform that mentioned this show, and I was intrigued. And then I. Then I told another friend about this who's here today, George Olson. It's just a fascinating project. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. And Caroline just added into the chat, um, my dear friend adopted two Moldovan orphans 23 years ago. They are now 24. I am an adoptee myself and an adoptive parent of international adoptees, and I know the importance of exposing adoptees to their birth cultures. I wanted something to give these two young men, Mark and Frank, for Christmas, and my search led to the article in the New York Times, led to the article in the New York Times. Uh, the books from Moldova will hopefully be here before Christmas. Thanks for sharing that, Caroline. Um, is there anyone Anyone who also wanted to say something? I just wanted to say that uh, if you guys feel that uh, you want to be part of this story, we are collect collecting now uh, videos of our followers from all around the world uh, to be included in the films and the final part of the film to have a portrait of our followers. So uh, if you feel comfortable with that, I will ask you to make a video uh, on your phone, for example, like a um, vertical video, selfie video, where you say uh, why uh, did uh, Zachary Kushner capture your attention? What do you like about him? And... Uh, just some uh, infos about you. Where are you from? And uh, if you if you feel that uh, you would like to be involved in this process, that's great. And thank you, Victor. And again, for folks um, who missed it, you can get in touch with Victor directly through the Instagram or the Facebook for Zaharia Kushner. Um, and if you're also uh, around the Portland area, please do come come by the gallery. Um, the show is up until the last day is December 30th. So um, we're here Wednesday through Saturday. And you can also check out um, some install shots and more images from the show on our website. Um, and again, there is a catalog of this exhibition um, that you can pick up here or on our uh, website as well. Um, does anybody else have any other questions or comments for Victor? All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, this is such a great time to, to get some more info about such a fascinating photographer. And thank you, Victor, so much for your time. I know it's late in the evening for you. Um, so thank you again so much for putting this show together at Blue Sky. We're really honored to be the, the first space to show this in the U.S. That's, that's really special for us. And um, yeah, we look forward to talking to more people and we'll be in touch with Victor and connecting folks as well. So um, please uh, reach out if you have any further questions and enjoy the rest of your day. And again, this is recorded. So um, we'll have this up on our YouTube in the next couple of days. Um, and I'll send you a link of that recording as well, Victor. So you have it for your archive. Thank you everybody for uh, being with us today.
Have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.